This program presents the latest information available on how to build a solid, high-performance floor assembly using engineered wood products. The information was developed to assist builders, trades, and inspectors in installation and inspection of floor assemblies properly constructed with engineered wood products. This program is a companion set to the program titled Engineered Wood Products in Structural Systems for Residential Construction. Note that, in addition to the practices outlined here, all applicable local building code requirements and all specifications established by the licensed professional for the project must be followed. Engineered wood product manufacturers have put together field framing guides that are widely available. A product-specific guide should be maintained on site with the blueprints. Assembly of the floor system begins with eye joists laid out on the sill plates of the foundation walls. The eye joists can be spaced at 12 inches, 16 inches, 19.2 inches, or 24 inches on center, as is typical for structural components of a residential floor system. Eye joists forming multiple spans that carry a bearing wall require blocking between eye joists at the bearing wall location. Separate span tables for multi-span conditions allow even greater clear spans between bearing points in multiple span conditions. Eye joists can be cantilevered beyond the foundation to accommodate designs that include a bay window or fireplace chase, for example. For these designs, where the cantilever supports concentrated loads, solid blocking between the cantilevered joists at the bearing location and web reinforcement of the cantilevered web portion for two times the cantilevered length are required. Simpler details apply to balcony cantilevers. Refer to manufacturer's literature for specific details. Openings in the floor system to accommodate stairs generally require glue lamb, structural composite lumber, or two-ply trimmer eye joists. When two-ply eye joists are used, filler blocking consisting of sawn lumber of the approximate size of the web is required. With two-ply eye joist trimmers, all three members are connected and provide a nailing surface for a strap hanger carrying the header at the stair hole. Headers are usually specified as structural composite lumber or glue lamb, dependent on the span carried. Crush or squash blocks may be 2x sawn lumber, rim board or SCL, cut 1 16th of an inch greater than the depth of the eye joist and connected to its top and bottom flanges with an 8 penny nail. The blocks are installed at both ends of the eye joist where a bearing wall is supported. Web stiffeners are pieces of minimum 15 30 seconds of an inch wood structural panel attached to the eye joist web between the flanges. These specialized hangers for 16 inch deep eye joists do not require web stiffeners. Blocking between eye joists or continuous rim board at exterior walls perpendicular to eye joist floor framing is required. Engineered wood rim board is specifically designed for use with eye joists to avoid differential shrinkage because sawn lumber shrinks more than engineered wood with the changes in moisture content expected when the material is in service. Eye joist top flanges must be temporarily braced before and during subfloor installation. Typically, 1x4x8 lumber is used for temporary bracing. Permanent bracing is supplied by the subfloor after it is glued and fastened. In multi-span continuous or cantilevered applications, eye joist bottom flanges require permanent bracing as well. Gypsum board serves this purpose for assemblies with finished areas below. It is important not to walk on or load a floor that has not had the floor subfloor permanently installed because the eye joists may topple over. Once the floor assembly has been completed, the mechanical trades will use knockouts and field cut holes in the eye joist webs to install pipes, wires, and ductwork. Knockouts are factory punched outlines of one and one half inch diameter holes in the eye joist web that can be opened up with a hammer tap to the spot. This size hole may be cut anywhere in the eye joist web so long as it is three inches away from other holes of the same size and is beyond an area within six inches horizontally and six inches vertically of the bearing load transfer point of the eye joist. 
Duct chase holes should be centered horizontally within the middle one-third of the span of the eye joist and centered vertically between the flanges. Maximum width and depth of holes varies by manufacturer and eye joist depth. A general rule of thumb is one-eighth of an inch of OSB web should separate the hole's edge from the flanges and the width of the hole should be no greater than the eye joist web's depth. However, consult the layout plan and manufacturer's recommendations. Measure twice, cut once. Use a sharp blade to cut square openings in eye joist webs and avoid overcutting at the corners of the openings. Flanges can never be cut, except when cutting the eye joist to length. Do not use damaged eye joists. Following practices presented in this program will result in a sturdy structural floor frame that performs solidly for many years, providing added value to the builder and the homeowner.